Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have my updated if I could only keep one tag video. So I created a tag two years ago called the if I could only keep one tag and I challenged you to go through your makeup collection and pick out just one item from every category and if everything else in your collection disappeared that was the only one you could keep and the twist is that I'm not asking what's your favorite I'm asking what makes the most sense what's the most practical what's the most bang for your buck what's the most options because you only get one. So I did film an updated version of it last year and now I'm kind of filming part three or my third edition of it. So this has been kind of fun for me to do every year to see how my preferences have changed, to see which items have stayed in. Spoiler alert, none of them. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Also, if you're a creator and you're watching this, I tag you, I think this video is fun. Also, if you've done it before and you wanna film an updated version, I tag you. All right, I'm ready to shock you guys in this video. Let's start with primer. So my first time I ever filmed this, the primer I picked was the Becca Backlight Primer. No, First Light. Thought about picking that one again. The only reason I didn't is because I feel like I've gotten to a place where my skincare is pretty effective already, so I don't necessarily need to reach for a super hydrating primers as much as I used to. And my revised version last year, I did the First Aid Beauty Coconut Skin. Again, it's another hydrating primer, so I don't feel like, I'm just not as into hydrating primers anymore, and I've kind of been skipping them, but instead, recently I've been reaching for more like smoothing primers. So I'm picking this one. This is from The Ordinary. It's their high adherence silicone primer. This is less than $5. It's amazing, and it's actually a pretty close dupe to the First Aid Beauty Pores Be Gone. So you're probably like, why didn't you pick the Pores Be Gone? Well, first of all, this is more affordable, which is awesome, but also this is fragrance free and the Pores Be Gone has fragrance in it. So this, very smoothing, it helps makeup sit on top of it nicely. And it's just a nice prepping step for your foundation to go on top of. Like foundation looks better when I apply it on top of this. So I love that. So the foundation I would pick, this has been my current favorite for a little while now. So maybe it's kind of bold and risky for me to select this, but the Stay Naked from Urban Decay, I wanna throw this in because I feel like it can be well manipulated. You can either wear it a little more matte, you can wear it a little more satiny, or you can really like prep really well with your skincare, put some oil on underneath or mix it in with an oil and go really glowy and radiant but I feel like as a day-to-day -day foundation, but as an everyday foundation, it has that nice medium coverage formulation, but the finish, when I prep it well, is kind of more satin, and that's my sweet spot. Satin finish, medium coverage. I thought about picking my e.l.f. foundation that I love. Honestly, I could probably pick either one but this has been the one I've been reaching for even more recently. I just think it's even like a slightly more smoothing and perfecting on the skin, so love this. For a powder, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a huge powder person, so a powder is a powder to me, but I picked the Born This Way from Too Faced. It's a nice loose setting powder. I feel like it's good and it, you can, I, I picked this one because I could do anything with this. I could just like really lightly dust over and set it or even, you know, with this foundation, I don't have to set it because it has a little more of a self-setting finish to it. But also, if I wanna be full glam one day, like you can bake with this, you can just, you could skip it, you could do a lighter setting like this, I could do a lot with. And because it is translucent, it's also nice to kind of like buff out harsh lines, kind of blur any patchiness. So I think it would be a nice powder if I was only gonna keep one. This one would serve every purpose that I need. For my bronzer. I was going to pick my Becca bronzer, but I'm almost done with it. So I was like, should I just, that doesn't, that doesn't count. It's kind of like out of my collection now because I'm panning it. It's pretty much done. I mean, if you keep up with my project pan series, you're going to have to wait and see. Also, I'm pre-filming this right now. So at the time I'm filming this, it's not done. But when this is up, is it done? I don't even know. Hopefully. But I was like, you have to pick a bronzer that you have and you have enough of. So I picked my Milani because I was like, this is probably my favorite out of all the ones that I have. It's the bronzer I'm wearing today, super easy to blend out, never gets patchy, also could be built up. The undertone is not too cool toned, it's not too warm toned, it's not too deep. Like, this is just a great bronzer. I wouldn't mind if I had to use this bronzer every day 
I would, I would enjoy it. For my blush, this one has, this one's the only one that has stayed. So this is my Tarte Blush in Party. It's just the perfect shade. It looks good with everything. It's not too pink. It's not too peachy. You can wear it with a pink look. You can wear it with a peachy look. It's nude. It's neutral. Build it up. Wear it lightly. Love it. Honestly, though, if I was following the rules that I just set for myself with the Becca bronzer, I shouldn't be able to include this because it's almost gone as well. But I feel like this has a lot more use in it than my Becca bronzer does. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include it because I love it. Honorable mention though to my Milani blush. Let me grab it. If I couldn't do the Tarte one, I would do Milani Powder Rose Blush in Romantic Rose. I love this one too. Kind of a similar shade to Party. All right, I'm ready to throw you for a loop with highlighter because this one I almost didn't pick because it's a little bit dark for me if I'm not self-tanned. I was like, you should go with a lighter highlighter. But I love this one so much and I've been getting to a point where I don't necessarily wear highlighter every day. So I was like, hmm, if I'm too light for it, I just won't wear it. But I love this highlighter, I've gotta pick it. This is Persona Cosmetics Zuma. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful. But the main reason I'm picking this is because in addition to using it as a highlighter, I love this as an eyeshadow. So the palette I picked, spoiler alert, it doesn't have like too, too many neutral shades. So if I want a day where I'm just doing a simple neutral eye, I'm going to be using my highlighter as my eyeshadow for like the lid shade. So I didn't feel like I could pick Mary Luminizer, which was kind of my runner up because I was like, you know, I like it on the lid shade, but I love this as an on the lid shade. So... We're gonna go with Zuma from Persona Cosmetics. Dual purposes here. We gotta make the most of these few items we get to pick. Oh my gosh, I forgot to share concealer. I'm picking the Milani concealer. I've mentioned a lot of Milani so far. I just, I don't know, I love the brand. This is my favorite concealer. You can wear it a little more lightweight. You can build it up a little more. Good coverage, love it. Now for a lip product. Okay, let me pause. In the last couple videos, I've kind of just skipped like, I didn't necessarily want to do every everything to make this video forever, like eyeliners, mascaras, brow products, because I'm kind of indifferent about those products. But let's just, like, rapid fire run through those. Favorite brow product, Koki Pomade. Favorite mascara, the Balm Mad Lash. Favorite eyeliner, Milani. Okay? <laughs> okay. Anyways. Back to the fun stuff for lips. I only pick one lip product. I try to make this tricky. So I don't say like one gloss, one liquid, one. No, you just get one, just one. One thing to put on your lips. And I picked this. This is from Urban Decay. It is the shade Fuel of their lip glosses. Now this is why this challenge is hard. This isn't my favorite lip product, but if I could only keep one, this is probably my most versatile option, I've decided, because I was gonna pick one of my Persona lip glosses, but I was like, those are kind of sheer. What if I want more intensity on the lip? So then I was like, what if I pick a bullet lipstick? And I was like, no, I'm not necessarily gonna wanna wear that every day. I love gloss too much. I couldn't go with a liquid lipstick, so I'm like, my lips would just be dry forever. So I was like, I've gotta do a gloss that has a little bit of color, but not too much color and too much pigment. So, I landed on this one. I think this shade works with everything. I mean, not everything. Maybe if I was doing like a pink look, I wouldn't love it with it, but it works with most. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to pick one product that's gonna give us the most options. So that's why I picked this lip gloss. What would you guys pick? I think lips are the hardest if you're making it really challenging and only picking one all together and not just like one in each category. Um, if the angle looks a little different right now and or if I look terrified, it's because the fire alarm just went off in my building, but it was a false alarm. So the show must go on. Let's finish this video with the moment you've all been waiting for. Which palette would I pick? First, let's recap the last two years. Year number one, I filmed this video. We picked this one. This is the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette. Love it. Really thought about picking it this time around. Thinking I might even change my mind and still pick it. I don't know. Let me get there. The second year, which was last year, I picked another Juvia's Place palette. I picked Magic. Now, here's the thing. At that time, I was way more into like fun, colorful looks. So this was perfect for me. But now I think I like something like more muted, not as fun and colorful. And I don't wear color as often. So I want something that gives me enough neutrals. Like this didn't have like a brown matte in it for me. But last time I had, like I could use my bronzer for it, you know? But I wanted to switch it up this time. 
So first I was thinking Sigma Enchanted. Love this palette, but it's a very cool tone. I want the option of doing warm tone or cool tones. So what I settled on is the Wanderlust palette from Profusion. Now you're probably like, wait, that's kind of colorful. What are you saying? But here's my thought. With the highlighter that I picked, I could do like um, the browns in the crease and the highlighter on the lid. I'm like, there's my everyday look right there. But then if I wanna have some fun, I can switch it up. And I've got the purples, the greens, and the blues. Maybe I could mix some of these to have a different color. I could do like a soft, just like all over the lid shimmer with one of these lighter shimmery shades. I mean, it's tough when you're only gonna pick one palette, but this has a lot of shades, so a lot more options for me. I love the formula of it. I think this would be my choice. What would you guys pick? The palette's always the hardest part because the other ones are like, yeah, whatever. If I have to use this bronzer every day, I'll be fine. But the palette, you're like, what can I really give up, you know? But that's gonna go ahead and complete this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below, what would you keep if you could only keep one product? Just share your answers in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.